Hello again everybody, it's Captain Firefox coming to you again from Captain's Corner, and today we are taking another look at Dual Universe. Another YouTuber by the name of Greystale Plays did a sit-down interview with the lead developer of Dual Universe, JC Bale. I'm sure I'm butchering that because it's French, but we're just going to call him JC the rest of the time. Now the interview is very informative, and it's over an hour long, so as a service to you, my viewers, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of the interview. If you would like to watch the entire interview, it is linked in the video description below. Now, the thing that stuck out most in my mind from the entire interview was the fact that there is only one arc ship in the game. For whatever reason, I thought each player got an arc ship. Nope! Everyone starts from the same ship on the same planet. The idea here is to force players to interact with other players. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but that's not the point of this video, so let's try and stay focused on the interview, and I'll try and keep my opinions out of this video. Another important bit of information that was given in the interview was that the game is planned to be released in 2018. That is a fairly quick turnaround for a game of this magnitude. Now, on to the nuts and bolts of the interview. On the topic of player death, JC stated that when you die, you'll respawn at the nearest resurrection node, which is an element that can be bought or crafted and placed at will by the player. JC noted that this will be a crucial strategic element in battle, because if you're able to take out the resurrection node of an invading fleet, then every time you kill a player from that fleet, they get sent back home, wherever that home is. JC also notes that you cannot control which node you resurrect at, which keeps players from using them as telep teleportation devices. You die, you resurrect at the closest owned node, period. JC also noted that, the alpha test, that for the alpha testing stage of the game, players will only be able to respawn at the arc ship. As for the goals of the game, JC notes that there is no goal in the game. There is no end quest or destination you are trying to reach. The goals are player driven. If you want to be an industrial tycoon, then become one. If you want to be a pirate, get a parrot. If you want to take over the galaxy, well, good luck. Whatever you can dream, you can become in this game, and I love that. JC was also asked about the economy, and he stated that the economy will connect every player. It is based on supply and demand, and there's no pre preset price for anything by the devs. It acts like a real market. Also, players will place the market structures in the game, so it is possible that the market you place in your city could become a major hub for the game. It should also be noted that just because you buy something at the market in one city or planet doesn't mean that that item suddenly appears in your inventory. You have to either physically fly to the market and pick it up, or pay someone else to ship it to you. The dev also expanded on the idea of voxel building. He stated that you can shape anything you want. Think of the voxels as a sculpting tool where you design the whole of your ship, then you add elements like a thruster, cockpit, etc., which are predefined and designed by the developers to your ship. JC also stated that different materials have different properties such as weight and durability, so the materials you use to build your ship matters. It also looks like mining is voxel based as, you, as well as you can see in the video playing in the background where he takes large chunks of the ground out with his sphere. JC also went into depth on the topic of LUA scripting, which I'm going to call Lua for speed's sake. Lua scripting is, according to JC, something that is easy to learn and understand and that is not necessary to be a coding genius to be able to use Lua scripting. The basics of this scripting is that once you have a ship built and all the elements added, engines, weapons, etc., you will still have just a hunk of metal in front of you. The ship won't fly until it has scripts in it. Now you have three options here. First, you can buy a ship off the market that already works and has the scripting done. Second, you can script the ship yourself, which gives you an extra level of customization. Or, finally, you can use the quote unquote auto configurator to write a normal script for the ship, which basically allows the engines and weapon systems to function as you would expect them to. The idea behind the Lua scripting is to add additional functionality and customization to your ship. I'll admit, in the interview, JC got to the auto configurator part at the end of his conversation about Lua scripting, and my heart had sunk because I'm not a scripter, and it sounded like I, was going to have, I wasn't going to be able to make a functional ship in the game. But he saved me at the end with the auto configurator thing. So breathe easy, you can still build your own ships without a masters in programming. As far as territory goes, JC stated that territory is currently a land asset, with plans to expand into a space asset in the future. Territory is divided into a one kilometer area that will be roughly hexagonal in shape, and that you have to place a territory unit to claim the area. To take an area from someone, you simply have to destroy or hack their territory unit and place your own. It is still being decided what happens to a player who enters into another player's territory at this time. It's possible that you won't be able to enter, or it's possible that you'll just be flagged as an outlaw. They don't know yet. 
The lore of the game was also discussed in an interview, and the quick version is that Earth is going to be destroyed by a neutron star, and they have a 500 year warning about the incoming destruction, so they build these large colony ships, or ARC ships, and send them out on a 10,000 year voyage with their human cargo in cryosleep. Once the ships land at their target, the player is unfrozen and tasked with starting up civilization again. After the players wake up, well, the players will make the rest of the lore. The question of how big can ships be was also asked during the interview. The answer blew my mind. There is no technical limit to how big a ship can be. Let that sink in. There is no technical limit to how big a ship can be. In the code of the game, a planet and a ship are the same thing. The only limit to the size of your ship is time. How much time are you willing to invest in gathering resources and actually constructing the ship? Also physics in the game are quote-unquote real, so the larger the ship, the more thrusters and power it requires. For example, the station in the video in the background is 8 kilometers long and requires 26 quote titan thrusters to move at a snail's pace, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. So as long as you're willing to invest the time, effort, and engineering, the sky isn't even the limit. You can build infinitely large. Along the topic of size, it was asked about the size of the universe. To start, planets are 100 kilometers in radius, and there can be an infinite number of planets. Trillions and trillions and trillions of planets. Planets are not generated until a player approaches one, but players can scan the star system before launching a Stargate probe to the star. The Stargate probe is something a player launches to get into another star system. They travel very slowly. JC stated that they will take anywhere from a week to two months to reach their destination. Once there, the player can jump to the probe, build the Stargate, and expand from there. So get comfy on your starter word world, because you're going to be there for a while. The prospects of being a hermit was also brought up in the interview, and it was confirmed that yes, it is possible to be a hermit and play a lone wolf style of game, but like in all MMOs, everything is easier with the group. It was also mentioned that players will be able to offer jobs to other players in a job market. It was just kind of glossed over in an interview, but I seem, but I assume it would be like a contract system in EVE Online, i.e. you will pay another player X amount of credits for them to transport items from place to place, etc, etc. Also, not all planets will look like Earth. There are multiple biomes on each planet, and there will be multiple types of planets. Expect that the further you get from the Ark ship, the stranger the planets will become. It was confirmed that there will be no NPC ships, structures, or animals in the game at launch. The NPC ships and structures will never be added into the game, but animals are on the quote, to-do list, but they are not a priority, end quote. JC mentioned that procedurally generated items are only interesting for so long before everything looks the same. They want the vast majority of items in the game to be designed by players. Another topic I found interesting was the topic of destruction, loss, griefing, and trolls. JC was very clear that this is not a free-for-all PvP game. It is not Mad Max were his exact words, I believe. There are safe zones in the game. At this stage in development, there will be a 20 km safe zone around the ARC ship where no weapons will fire and nothing can be stolen. You can also find other safe zones through exploration and by finding certain artifacts. JC noted that these safe zones will be extremely valuable resources that will be super important to capture and hold. Additionally, there are protection bubbles that can be generated and built by players. They are not impossible to destroy, but they are very, very difficult to take down. Think of a POS, player owned structure from EVE Online. They will cost a lot of money, and they will take an enormous amount of energy to generate. The idea is for people to get together and help fund the operation of these safe bubbles. JC also stated there are several other ways to protect your items when you're not online, such as digging underground and hiding your ships and supplies. It was clarified that there are two types of ships currently in the game, your spaceships and a hovercraft style ship that can only get about a kilometer in the air and will not be able to make orbit. There are no wheeled vehicles or underwater craft at, in the game at this time. The interview was ended with a few rapid fire questions which I will rapidly go over now. Yes, there will be armor slots and weapons for the player which can be crafted and upgraded, and you can build onto a ship after it is launched. There is no flowing water currently, and the physics for underground caverns, etc. are like Minecraft physics. Things will float and there will not be any kind of cave-ins to worry about. And finally, there is only the human race as a playable race, since this is the story of humanity after Earth falls. The interview was wrapped up with very good news. The question was asked about the stability of the game with such large ships and multiple players on a single shard server. 
JC's answer put a smile on my face. He stated the game was built from the ground up with huge structures and massive numbers of players in mind. It has a very good LOD, which stands for Level of Detail System, which reduces the amount of detail of objects the further you get away from them which means that only items in close proximity to you are loaded in full detail, which significantly reduces the strain on your computer and the server. He reported that the stress tests being conducted on the server are very positive and that everything is working as it was supposed to. While he of course left room for issues once alpha testing begins, the overall technical aspect of things sounded very positive. So, unlike Space Engineers, when you log on to play Dual Universe, the technical issues with the game code will be the last thing on your mind. Now that wraps up this latest update on Dual Universe, and as a reminder, if you would like to catch the entire interview, check the description below for the link to Grey Still Plays channel. Now, for the shameless plugs. Check out the Dual Universe community portal linked in the video description below, and sign up for our organization, The Knights Who Say Me, which will also be linked down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card. We're halfway to the drawing now, so smash that subscribe button to enter into the drawing. And as always, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you really liked it, please hit subscribe. And don't forget to check out my channel for more great videos. I'm Captain Firefox, and I'm out. I'll see you all next time.